And this summer we're inviting you on a Beauty new heritage, heritage hunt. hunt. Thanks to everyone who sent in a question this week. We had lots of different things to choose from for this episode. But we've had a few questions about one thing more than anything else. So, this week we'll be talking about... Shinty? No, swimming! swimming. People have probably been been swimming in the seas around Butte for as long as people have lived on Butte. In 1840, Catherine Sinclair complained there was neither bathing huts nor baths for people of Rothsey. But by the 1870s, the, the area by the Skate Woods ha, had become the place for people to swim in the sea. The earliest swimming here seems to have been a kind of strip it all off and dive in sort of swimming, and strictly for men only. By by the 1880s, proper changing booths had, had been set up uh, to let both sexes change into bathing costumes. Although men and women were kept strictly to their own parts of the beach. In 1882, this open air swimming zone was joined by a much more fancier arrangement across the bay. The first roofed public baths on Butte were built right here. They were a gift from Alexander Bannatyne Stewart and were called the Stewart Baths. But more about him another time. Admission was 2p, that's 70p in today's money. For that you got a swim, you had a shot on the heated baths if you didn't have a bath at home, and they threw in a free towel. The pool was tidied, so was rifled twice a day, but, but, solving, but solving the problem of stopping the water draining away at low tides delayed the opening of the bath by two years. The baths were unisex, but could only visit, be visited by ladies if they made an appointment with the custodian first. The building was kept at a steady temperature of round about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but the water wasn't heated at all. Brrr. Over at the West Bay, by the 1930s, people were demanding new facilities. So, in 1933, the all-new West Bay Open Air Bath Station was opened. The new facility featured this Art Deco ticket office, diving boards, floodlights, and a surrounding seawall. At the opening, at the opening ceremony, the first aiders had to deal with six cases of cramp due to the coldness of the water. The bathing station was used by over a thousand people a day for the first few years it was open, but by 1938, both this and the Stuart Baths had closed replaced by a new, improved, leisure swimming pool. The new leisure centre was here at Battery Place. It was built in 1875 and it was the first public aquarium in Scotland. It contained fish, seals and porpoise and even a crocodile. By 1934, the aquarium was long gone though. The seal, or crocodile pool at the back, had been rebuilt and in 1938 it was reopened as a luxury swimming pool. As well as swimming, the pool offered healthy baths and, and fresh water to soul food and seaweed foam and even mud. The pool was filled with salt water, which was heated this time and had space for over 700 spectators. It was open for 50 years but closed in the late 1980s and was replaced by the new Rossi Leisure Centre. Which is still there today. today. We hope that answers all of your questions. This week's challenge is a simple one. We want you to visit the old swimming pools that we've shown you in this film and take a photograph for us. 
When you've done that, draw a picture of one of them showing us what you think it would have been like in its heyday when it was open. See, See you next week. week. Welcome to the Zander Files. Did you know that at the height of the tourism boom, it is estimated that over 200,000 people visited Butte each year. Skeet Woods was planted du during the Napoleonic War. Stuart House on Butte had the first private heated swimming pool in the world. The party place is called that because a battery of five cannons was based here from the late 18th century onwards. It's rumoured that the cannons eventually ended up as as bollards on the pier. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>